Welcome to the 20th video in our 3D Racing video tutorial series. This is the last main video that I'm going to cover for this project. Um, I will have a next video, a default video 21, but video 21 is going to cover um, what I learned from doing this project, so things I want to fix. I'm going to do this whole project again next year and I'm going to make a lot of improvements. I've, I've learned a lot from completing this, this game. Um, trying to clean up some of the stuff that we're having issues with now and then uh, at the end some like nice features like uh, post processing on the camera rotating our skybox doing some animations or fading between the scenes uh, and just building the game out at the end so it feels a little bit more polished but that'll be the next video for this video we're going to finish up what we we're talking about in the last one which is collecting cash to then have unlockables. I'm only going to show you how to make an unlockable track. So taking what we currently have, our second track, and uh, make it so that players can't access it until they earn enough money and then pay for the track. Uh, and, and saving that so that when they leave the game they can come back. If they've unlocked the track, it's still unlocked. So that will be basically um, the way we're going to work. There's a lot of different ways to do this. Uh, this is the way that I tend to prefer. It makes the most sense. Also in the context of how we've done saving stuff before. Uh, we've used player preferences to do that. And I, I want to use that again. I did make a little test project here. To kind of work through it on my own. It's not going to be exactly the same. But I kind of quickly want to explain to you what we're going to do. Uh, through this game. And uh, from there go back and, and change it in our racing game. So I currently have three buttons, and if I press play, uh, the red button will spawn a red ball, the blue button will spawn a blue ball, and that's based off a of spawn script. Now right now the green button is spawning because I've tested this before, uh, and so I, can, I need to go back and set it so that it doesn't interact. But I can show you the script and give you a sense of like, what's happening and how we're going to proceed. You'll notice I have two images down here, by the way. Uh, the image is sort of my, um, to switch out, to let me know if it's unlockable or not, so the player could see that. So what we're looking to do is to, well, I just, I just uncomment it, this player prefs line here. At the start of the game, I want to reset it so that it is set to zero. So if I press play now, I shouldn't be able to interact with this green button. So yeah, the picture is different, and if I try clicking on the green button, it doesn't work. So what is happening is, we're going to have an integer, and we're going to name it, is it unlocked? So track 2 is unlocked, whatever you want to call it. And if it's 0, then we're not going to be able to interact with the button. However, if the player ever gets enough money to unlock, that button or make it interactable or they've already unlocked it once then we'll make the button able to be interacted with and whenever whenever it becomes interactable the first time they click it so if they have never clicked on it before it will reduce the amount that they owe for it uh, using that track and then finally set that player prefs integer to one which is the condition by which they can continue to interact with this. Now this script is not complete. One, the way that we're handling images here won't work um, in our racing game. Here I just had a sprite and I could switch them in and out and they would fit within the size of the button. But we actually had a raw image as a child of our button over here. Um, so if you go to the track to see like the button itself has its own image and then the raw image is a child of it. So that kind of messes up the way I was planning on switching the pictures back and forth. Um, and then, let me go back to the script here. So this, this part right here is not going to be a, a direct translation. And then I still need to write a little bit of script here to save whatever cache value we have after we're done. So this isn't 100%, but this is definitely like a good start to how we're going to work today. So I'm going to pretty much kind of walk through this script here and just transfer it. Uh, parts of it into ours. Now, please don't copy directly because once again, we're going to have to change this throughout as we as we work through. 
Uh, so I'm going to close that one though, just so I don't get confused and open my 3D racer panel. And man, we have so many scripts. Look at this. This is a little wild. I mean, this is what you kind of expect uh, by this point in the game, but <clears throat> it's you know it's a little daunting sometimes. So let me close this unlockables test and go back into my project folder. So essentially what we need to do is build an unlockable script to, to hold this information. So I'm going to go into my scripts folder, add a new C-sharp script, and call it unlockable. Press return. I'm going to look over here really quick. Name did, you know, save or carry across. And open Visual Studio looking for this project. There you go. Okay, so unlockable. So what are the things we want to do? I'm not going to use, I had a boolean earlier. Um, we can put that back in there later if we want to check to see if it is unlocked or not. Um, no, let's do that. So public bool. And we're going to say <coughs> track. I'm going to say is track to unlocked. It's just good practice to start your booleans with the is. Um, starting with is, I, I haven't done it every time, um, but I, I can appreciate it more as I do more and more coding. Uh, so the things we need to know, we need to know how much money we have. It's a public integer, and that is our cash amount. And then whenever, what, uh, what, how much money do we, what's the threshold for which we want to be able to unlock the second track. So how much money do we want the player to have before they can unlock it? So public integer uh, amount to unlock track two. And then, I'm going to create a little space here. We're going to we need to interact with the button. We need to turn the button on and off. So uh, we definitely need to go up here and use an, uh, unity engine Dot UI. Now I know we're using Text Mesh Pro, but <clears throat> maybe this is something I'm just not experienced with. I wasn't able to find a way to get the button to be interactable or not when I was using uh, Text Mesh Pro as the namespace. So I have found that I just had to keep using um, the button um, variable type, which comes from UI. So I have to go public button, capital B, <clears throat> and call it track to button. And then, so we're going to basically like make sure it's an uninteractable, it's interact, uh, the interactable nature is not set, and then we'll turn it on later. So whenever we click on the button later, we're going to need to have how much we're going to subtract and all that. Well, we'll come back to that in a second. So at the start, we don't really need anything um, here. And and the update is where we're going to be checking. Now this is not this is not like the most um, efficient way to handle this. We can we could check to see if we try to click the button and then have it check to see if this is going on. So it's it's going to be checking every frame. There's better ways to do this, but at this point, I think it's it's going to be okay for what we're trying to do. So if the amount of cash we have, so cash amount. When we come to this screen selection scene, if it ever goes above, if it ever greater than the amount to unlock track two, then we want to make a track two button dot interactable equal to true. And that's pretty much it. If we ever come to this screen and we have more money. Uh, than what we say we need to have. Oh, did I spell amount to? I, I forgot to put another T right there. Um, so amount to unlock track two. Uh, then that means we can click on the button. That that part's pretty straightforward. That's pretty easy. Um, so I'm going to save this really quick and come back over here. I want to build in the hierarchy something to hold this unlockable script. So I'm going to make a... Kind of close this up a little bit. I'm going to make a new... <clears throat> a new manager, so create empty, and I'm going to call this unlockable 
space manager. In unlockable manager, I'm going to add the unlockable script. And it wants to know what my track 2 button is. So I'm going to go into canvas, find track 2, do this whole thing here. I'm going to drag that in. Uh, and I can go ahead and set some of these values. So cash amount is something I'm going to need to have. I want to get um, from what I've earned already in the game. And we'll go back and check that in just a second. The amount to unlock track two, I'm going to say I need to have at least a thousand dollars there. So wait, did I say? Um, let me go back to my script. So I basically have to have more than a thousand dollars. Where is unlockable? Where is it hiding? Hmm. This is the thing I don't like about having this many scripts like this. Unlockable. Okay, I'll just do that at the very end. Okay. So wait, I have to have more than a thousand dollars. So I should say if it, the cash amount is ever greater than or equal to, because um, a thousand one wouldn't work, but we'd never have that sort of denomination because we're increasing by amounts of a hundred. Um, and I need to in the start. I think I do need to start here. I'm going to say public start. When this script starts, you know, I'm reason why I'm doing this in the update right now. By the way, is for like kind of testing purposes. So if we're editing this, uh, we can do it in real time and see if the amount actually goes above. We can move this into the start later on. So we're going to say cash amount is equal to player press dot get integer and the integer we're getting was total cash and semicolon where I was getting that was was from our cash manager which I believe is where are you at what am I doing wrong here All right, okay, here's cash, collectible cash display, cash manager right there. Uh, where we were getting, we have this integer here called total cash that was being held on, um, you know, coming from our, our mode where we were collecting cash earlier. There's an unlockable down here. Okay. So we want to say how much cash we have at the beginning of the game and find that. <clears throat> now I went back and erased all my cash in between these videos because uh, I wanted to test some of this out. So if I had zero, would it work or not? So I'm going to go back over here and I should go ahead and make my track zero two uninteractable. So on track two, under the button component, there is a little check mark, a little boolean called interactable and I'm going to turn that off. And if I press play, what should happen is I should not be able to click on my night depot. So my earnings are zero. I have earned nothing. And if I click, now it still detects if my mouse is over because we used a, um, you know, as mouse over to switch our backgrounds, but it won't let me click on it. That's why I'm not getting these sort of inter, uh, interactions and stuff. Uh, so that's working the way we want it to. So now in the update, out of curiosity, uh, I'm going to go to my unlockable manager and I should change my cash amount to say that it's a thousand dollars. So now what I should see is I can now hover over it and click on it. So we know that works. Um, so now I can move this line of code here, Command X, up here to the start. So it only checks now in the start. Um, I might need to move it back down later if we're going to do some testing stuff, but that's okay. So um, we want to say another. So we need to make it so that if it is interactable, then we can call a method that will uh, allow us to subtract them a fee, how much we want this to cost. So I'm going to go below the void update and make a new method called void subtract fee. And this should be a public, by the way, because we're going to be referencing to this on the button. Public void subtract fee, open close argument, and go to the next line here. So if 
player preferences dot get integer. So I guess what we're going to be needing to do is we're yeah, basically we're going to set an integer to zero. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna get the integer right now. We're gonna call it track to unlocked, and then comma. I'm uh, sorry, not comma. I don't need a comma here. If it's set equal equals to zero. So if the integer is ever zero. And go below here. So when is it ever zero? I guess we could say in the start. Uh, if else if cash amount is less than oh we don't want to do that though because if we ever have less than cash we'll set it later on. For now let's. Let's just put it in our start. We're going to make this to be zero just for our, our testing purposes. Yeah. So what I was thinking about doing here earlier was just setting it to zero in the start every time. If the cash amount's below, but once you spend the money, it's going to go below and we don't want it to turn off our ability to use the button. So player prefs dot set int. The name of it is track two. Now these are all like strings, right? So the names have got to match. This is where you put a comma and you say what you want it to be, so zero. For now, we're going to leave this line in here. If it is zero and uh, we're able to interact with the button, then we want to say, uh, take our cash amount. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm, cash amount. And I think this is where things kind of get a little funky. We need to subtract a certain fee. So I'm going to go up here to public integer amount or I don't know track fee or something I don't know track fee I'll just go with that so how much is going to cost us cash amount minus equals so we'll find out what it's what is equal to after we subtract our track fee here we'll need to save that amount to our total cash in just a minute. But I just want to go ahead and also say that player prefs dot set int, the name of it is track, oops, that's a string, so there you go. Track to unlocked is comma one. All right. So I'm hoping this makes sense. Um, so this subtract fee is need, needs to be a method that we will call on the button once we are able to click on it. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to come back over here. Subtract two. And up here at the very top, I'm going to add a method, I'm sorry, add a on click event on the button component. So plus, dragging in my unlockable manager do, 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 and calling the function of subtract fee. And save that. So this will only work, I'll only be able to subtract the fee if my integer of track two unlocked is set to zero. If it goes to one, it will not reduce that fee anymore. Uh, now, uh, yeah, okay. So let's go ahead and press play. We should not be able to interact with this button right now. My earnings are zero. I'm unable to interact with it. If I go to my unlockable manager, Oh, I need to set the track fee. Let's say it costs $500. Well, we have to remember to do that outside of play mode. And the cash amount that I currently have 
It's not enough. Let's go to a thousand. Okay, so now at a thousand. Oh, I, I, I moved it out of the update, didn't I? That's what's going on here. All right, so let's take our track fee here to 500. And our cash amount, let's go ahead and say we have a thousand dollars, which is what we need. So now this time it should be interactable because it only checks at the start because we moved it to the start. All right. The telltale sign was that we'll have an animation or something going on in the background here. Ooh. So what am I doing wrong here? Oh, geez, man. Wait, did it work? So cash amount, 1,000, did it reduce that amount? I wasn't looking over here uh, in the inspector. Oh, it's setting my cash amount to zero. Oh, because, dang it, that's silly. Uh, right here, I'm getting that cash amount. I'm gonna take that out, duh, for testing. I was like, why did it go to zero? Is it just taking away the $500 really quickly? All right, so I have $1,000. All right, we should be good to go. Let's try it one more time. All right, hover, it works. If I click on it, my cash amount went down to $500. Now if I click on it again, does it go down again? It does not. And the reason why it does not is because this script only allows me to, where'd you go? Where'd you go, unlockable? Where'd you go, buddy? All right, well. I'll have to find that. All right, I'll just do it this way. Uh, it only works if the number is set to zero. So we got that part to work. Now the things we need to fix are, um, well, one, I, need, I don't really need this Boolean. I was going to use that. But I guess we can say here, set that Boolean to true. So is tracked, track to unlocked, dot. Uh, oh, my gosh. It's just... Well, is true. It's like, is it is it like set active or something? I, I don't know why I was having a brain freeze there. Is track two unlocked is equal to true. That way we can see that. All right, so cash amount right here. I don't have enough money for this to work. Uh, but what I can do, I'm gonna cheat the system really quick, is in this start, I'm really gonna go ahead and just give myself money by using the player prefs line here. And the name of the was instead it was called total cash, and I'm going to give myself a thousand dollars so I can kind of test and cheat stuff. Later on, whenever you uh, build the game out, you're going to want to make sure that it's set back to zero so your player doesn't start off with all that money. And I also need to, I guess. Um, Did, did my earnings reflect that? I think it should have. Okay. I also want to go ahead and save my new uh, amount. So I'm going to say player prefs dot set integer. I can just copy this, right? I can just copy and paste what I have here. But when I click on it, it's going to be set to uh, what cash amount is when we're done. Uh, so after you click on it, it's going to subtract the track fee and then save that number to your, your game. Uh, that's pretty straightforward stuff. So let's test this out. I saved. I didn't look to see if earnings reflected what I had here in cash amount. And to see if it's updating it properly, I'm just going to change it here in the inspector to um, zero. And it should change it because in the start, we are going back to, uh, we're, we're saying become a thousand. Yeah, it's going to become a thousand, then get that money. And we're also setting it back to zero. Even though we made it unlockable once, it's going to make it so that it, it doesn't work again. Okay, so I'm going to press play. Okay, so we got a thousand dollars, so that's working, and our earnings are a thousand. And if I click on it, the Boolean is track two unlocked, is triggered, and it, our earnings now shows that we have $500. We spent $500 on this. Um, so the last thing I kind of want to do for this, uh, so we, we got all that working. Uh, I'm going to play the game 
one more time. I'm going to give myself zero dollars. And I'm going to say that the track is unlocked, so it saves this information. Um, no, I'm going to wait on that. I, yeah, I'm just going to keep it at 1,000. And here's why. Because we have to do one last step. we got to make it so that whenever we subtract the fee, we switch the, the image. So at the beginning of the game, so if it's unlocked, we're, we're going to have a, we have this raw image. So we need a whole information about those. So I'm going to go up here. We want to take it so that our current image is only shows up whenever we can actually play it. Uh, and, and instead, we have a lock looking screen. So let me go ahead and get that. So over here in assets, we had in our, was it in textures? No, it was in UI. I put a folder called UI. And I have my original night picture here. But there was a package downloaded, like a racing UI package. And it wasn't very good, to be honest. Uh, it had some slice images in it, a PNG. And it had this like money one here. And I went over here and I changed it from default to sprite and I hit apply. Child of track two, let's do it this way. I can just basically take this image here. I'm gonna rename this one to um, night image. And then I'm gonna duplicate it. That's probably better, command D. And I'm gonna change that to lock image. and drag this in as my picture. And we're kind of, it's kind of cool that I can see like it like covers that up. Um, so it looks like a money bag, but it also kind of looks like a lock. I don't know, I like, I like that. So um, lock image will either be on or off. I'll turn them both off actually, that one and this one. Uh, based on if it is, um, Um, if it's been unlocked or interactable. So let's go back to our script. And so we, we need to, dang it, we're, you know what? Unlockable just keeps disappearing on me. It's kind of funny, but at the top, let's build some variables for this. So public, and we're just gonna go game object, night image. And then the other one is public game object, blocked image. So at the start, if interactable is true, I want to make it so that when you do the subtract fee, it changes it. But at the start, I wanted to go ahead and check and see if, if, yeah. If player prefs, Let me get there. There. If player prefs, no, not totally. I'm going to get this one right here. So I'm going to get that line of code here in my start. If player prefs dot get int equals track two unlocked equals zero, then we will we're going to use the locked image. Locked image dot set active is if and I, you know, I'm gonna just make sure I say that the other one is not true just in case we get some like you know I don't know I can imagine me overlooking something here so and it will set the other one to false and do the alternative here uh, so just copy and paste these two and just change their true and false statements. I actually took the whole thing here, those lines, paste them. And if, the, if it becomes one, then this is false and this is true. And I guess because this is setting it to one here, and this only happens at the start, I need to go ahead and tell it to turn on, take this line of code here and drag it in, like put it right there. So it'll change our images out for us there. All right, let's test this out. Uh, I'm gonna move this line, before I actually test it out, I'm gonna remove this line down here. Um, 
I'm just going to remove this here so that I can change that total cash in my in in game. Uh, so I actually want to go ahead and set it back to total cash, set it to zero here. Yeah, that way I can um, see it at zero, see if it doesn't work, and then uh, add money and see if I can get it to, to turn on and off. So, okay, I need to initialize what these images are. So night image goes here, and lock image goes here. All right, press play. So right now it looks locked. I can't click on it, can't interact with it, but if I get, let's say I, now I have a thousand dollars, does that, oh, because it only checks at the beginning. Gosh, I keep making that mistake. But we know that that doesn't work. So now if I go and move this up to a thousand dollars here, and I press play. Which I think I did like too many times just then. Did I click it like three times? Okay, no. All right. It says I have a thousand dollars, but it didn't switch my image it only oh it's whenever I subtract the fee that's fine that's what I wanted to do so now it, it's like accessible uh, so an easy thing to do too right would be like to play a little sound effect here when you click on subtract fee uh, so I would definitely like consider doing that I'll just add a little note here play sound effect um, and I don't know. I think that's everything I wanted to cover with unlockables. I think we should, before we go, uh, you should try playing the game one more time with setting your amounts to zero, just to save your player preps, and then remove those lines that you're putting in for decoding. Oh, I'm sorry, for testing. That way it, sa it saves the player press file uh, so that the, this is locked uh, during gameplay. And that's all you have to do is just hit play, and it'll save that amount. Uh, there for you. Yeah, so this is the last video for this um, this um, tutorial series. Uh, look out for the next video uh, where I go over some like little ways to touch up the game and make it a little bit nicer. And then uh, I, I just want to talk through some of the things I knew I did poorly uh, and what I wanted to learn from this experience. And I'm going to make the game again, like I said, and I'm really looking forward to improving some of these systems. So. Uh, if you've been following along, I really appreciate it, and I will see you in the last video.